Hello YouTube, I'm Andrew Does Hair. You can find my work on Instagram at Andrew Does Hair. This is my friend Steen. He's a photographer, cinematographer. He just does all kinds of media work. And in fact, he was one of my mentors who taught me how to take pictures. He's got very long hair. And today we decided to trim it into something a little shorter, a little more fun. And we kind of wanted to aim for a little bit of the John Wick haircut. Now, if you Google pictures of John Wick, you'll see that sometimes his hair is actually pretty short and the front kind of hits around his eyebrow. But in other pictures, his hair is very long and less layered and hits like way down to his chin. So I'm going to kind of go on the shorter side here just to make his haircut last longer for him. And I'm gonna go on the more heavily layered side here because he plays in a band and his hair moves around a lot. And like the more layers you have, the more movement you're gonna get. And so if you want your hair to sit more sleek more often, you kind of, maybe you wanna um, go with less layers, but that's about what we're gonna go for today. So after I clip a square and a triangle out of the top of the head, what I'm gonna do is pull the hair down here and start with the perimeter. I'm kind of shooting for like between his cheekbone and between his jaw. Um, to kind of split the difference between some of the longest and shortest versions of John Wick that I've seen. And then I'm going to continue taking hair from the back of the head and pulling it forward to cut it so that as it falls down, it kind of just creates that nice little mullet shape there. As you'd imagine, what I do on the right side, it will emulate on the left side. And before I go ahead and cut all the way across, I did want to stop and check to make sure that both sides were even. Once I have this done, I can pull the hair down and back. I'm going to have him look down as I do this, and I'm just going to cut it straight across the back to, I don't know, whatever felt like the right length. And already that kind of looks a little John Wicky. So now I'm going to go through and layer everything. As I pull that first section out, I'm looking for the length of the hair at the very bottom of my fingers. That was cut when I pulled the hair down and, and, and decided how long to leave it. And so that's my guide to decide how to layer this. And what I'm doing is just pulling everything straight out parallel to the floor and cutting it straight up and down from that longest hair at the very bottom of the section. I'm gonna work all the way around the haircut doing this. And as I'm picking up each new section, I'm also holding the last section I cut to see as a guide to be just double sure about where I'm cutting the new section. Once I'm done working around those side panels, I'm going to start working through the top. Now, the only reason I clipped the top out of the way in any case was, you know, the same reason you might cut up a sandwich to eat it more easily. It's just less hair to work with and move around at once. Once I finish in the back here and I drop down the top, I am gonna deviate from pulling everything straight out and connecting it. What I'm gonna do in the very front here with like the fringe area is I'm gonna over direct it back because that's gonna cause it to be a little bit longer. It travels further to be cut if I connect it back here and therefore it's going to sit a little bit longer. But through the rest of the back of the haircut, everything's just coming straight out and I'm connecting that same shape that I had created um, while layering the bottom of the hair. I'm just connecting it straight up through the top. And that's kind of the rough draft there. We are like 80% done at this point. So I'm going to put in a tiny little bit of ADH dry because we just shampooed his hair and it's going to be really, really fluffy if we just like blow dry it as it is. And by putting this product in, it's going to make it feel a little bit sticky, a little bit gritty, a little bit dirty. It's almost like a sea salt spray. Um, we used it very, very sparingly just to kind of make the hair sticky feeling. So if you notice when you go look up John Wick haircuts, you'll find that sometimes he looks very polished and very pristine and tidy and everything's smooth and straight and kind of tucked behind his ears and it looks neat and very tuxedo-y. But other times, you know, he's in the rain and the wind and his hair's flipping around and going all crazy everywhere. And theoretically, sure, you could style it to look like either. But just to make life easier, what I would say is if you have this haircut, style it neat and clean if you're going to style it. And then if you want it to look like you went out in a, a rainstorm, then go out in a rainstorm. So basically you go through the effort to smooth out the hair, um, first rough drying and then smoothing it out by using a brush to add some tension. And your hair is gonna look very smooth and polished, but it's only gonna look that way for a day. And then the next day it's gonna be a little more messed up. And the next day it's gonna be a little more messed up. And you can actually go a few days letting your hair kind of become messier. And it'll look better if you do this than if you just let it air dry and become messed up. And so I would say whether you wanna wear it kind of messier or neater, start with this process, blow dry, use the brush to add some tension to start smoothing it out and then let it become messy. So what I'm doing here is using a nine row brush to really focus some heat in here and smooth things out. The reason I like the nine row brush for this as opposed to like a round brush or a vent brush is this is going to create a barrier between the heat of the dryer and his scalp. I can put a lot of heat into this brush and it's not gonna go through the brush and burn him. So I can keep the hair close to the scalp where I need to and I can just really focus the heat in here to polish everything. Right about here, you can see like while everything's getting really smooth and flat, you can see a little bit of, I guess you'd say imperfections in the cut. This does not mean I did a bad haircut. This is, means that I have an unfinished haircut. Any haircut you get, if they don't refine it after they blow dry it, you're probably not going to get the best haircut. 
So now that everything is blow dried and I can see those imperfections, I can see where I want to go through and texturize and remove some weight just based on, you know, what I'm doing here is going to be different for every head depending on the hair's texture. You can see everything near the bottom there lays really nicely, but near the top it sits kind of heavy. So I'm going to take some sections through the top and I'm going to point cut in the direction I want the hair to lay to just soften things up and break it up. So back here where I want the hair to bend down and hug the head, I'm texturizing with like a downward point cut because that's going to cause the hair to want to bend that way. And on this side here, as I go to point cut this, I want the hair to flow back. So I'm going to point cut it toward the back and that's going to help the hair to want to move that way. Once I'm done point cutting and slide cutting throughout to kind of just debulk a little bit, I'm going to go back to this little mullet here and do a little more slide cutting to debulk that as well. Now, before I show you the finished result, let's uh, do a little photo shoot here. Because this is like a haircut from a movie, I thought it would be fun to kind of go for a, a cinematic look. Uh, I, that word is thrown around so much. So I'm, I want to try to make these pictures look really dramatic. In order to do that, I'm going to have to have some fun with lighting here. So I'm starting off with a Godox SL60. This is a video light. It's very cheap on eBay or Amazon or whatever. I'm taking off the diffuser and putting on a grid. And the reason I'm going to do this is it's going to take this light off of that back wall. And this way, when I shoot against that white wall, the white's actually going to fall to black in the photo. But you can still see that splash of light on the ground because I'm still getting quite a bit of light out of this. It's just not spraying all over the room anymore because of that grid. On the bottom here, I put a Young Nuo YN360 light with some paper diffusion to act as a fill light for us. Now I could probably just shoot against plain black and it would look pretty cool. But what I want to do instead is take this seven inch reflector here, put a grid on it to again, prevent the light from spilling all over. And I'm just going to put it against the wall to get kind of a splash of light against the wall. Give us a little dimension or depth or something. Um, I don't even know what it's supposed to look like. It's just going to be, you know, so it's not just a plain black background. Now to shoot today, I'm going to be using my iPhone 13 Pro Max. Now, if you've never thought that you had a great camera in your pocket, let me show you some tricks with the phone. This is the standard lens with a standard exposure. And if you're shooting like that, you might think, oh yeah, well, this is not a real camera. I need to buy a real camera. Use your 3X lens if you've got it. You can see right away that by doing that, his proportions look way better and the background is way less distracting. After you do that, drop the exposure down. And by doing this, what's gonna happen is I'm gonna retain a whole lot more detail and a whole lot more information in the, in the skin tones and the saturation. It's just going to look way nicer. So if you've never tried to do that and, and you're thinking maybe you want to buy a fancy camera, try messing around with your lenses and your exposure on your phone and see if you can get what you want out of that. You'll be surprised at what the iPhone can get away with. Now, as I shoot all of the photos in this, I am shooting in RAW. You can go into your settings and figure out how to turn that on. And the reason I'm doing that is I'm going to edit these. I'm using Adobe Lightroom on my phone and just pushing hues and white balance and colors around, a little bit of tone curve adjustments. I'm not doing anything super major with these edits. They're, they're very loose, but if you plan to edit anything, shoot it in RAW always. If you want to just take it straight out of the camera and use it, shoot it in JPEG or whatever Apple does. Now, I want to start off with a very clean, tidy look here because generally speaking, it's easier to take clean hair and mess it up throughout a shoot than it is to take messy hair and then clean it up at, at, during a shoot. And I want to get in this group of photos here, I want to get everything from the clean looks to the messy looks. And here in this setup, I was able to get one shot that I was happy to edit in two different ways here. And I was like, okay, that's, that's pretty good. That looks a little bit John Wicky, a little bit cinematic-y here. So now I'm going to move the lights around again. I'm taking my gridded beauty dish and I'm taking it from overhead and I'm pointing it sideways to kind of do, I guess I was initially thinking I was going to do some kind of like Rembrandt lighting here. Now I turn that light way down and what I'm going to do is turn on these young new OYN 360 lights over here and uh, I'm going to set them to white, so 5600K, and I'm going to put some orange diffusers on them to make them really, really warm. So the reason I wanted to put that gridded beauty dish on the SL60 very low is that I want this light back here to look very, very bright. Something that just always looks cinematic is when you have bright light behind the subject and then dim light in front of them. If you do that, it's like, boom, instant cinema. Now, as I shot this, I wanted the really, really warm light on the far side there because I wanted to take this white light and turn it blue in editing here. So I just took my white balance and I shifted it to the cool side. But those warm lights were so warm that they stayed yellow compared to the blue. And I was able to get that kind of, you know, split tone situation here in the final edit. I thought that was kind of fun. I, you know, I'm kind of proud, like, hey, that's an iPhone photo. That looks pretty stinking good. So once I got this shot that I was pretty happy with, I rearranged the lights again. So I pulled off those orange diffusers and I set these things to kind of a teal color. I left one on the background so that I could see those bricks and they wouldn't just be blackness in the shot. 
And I put the other one behind him as a little bit of a rim light here. And then I, I just kept that, that gridded beauty dish on his left side here. And once I got a few test shots to, to see that I liked the lighting, I decided that I was going to mess his hair up at this point. So now we're going to start getting some more of the disheveled looks out of this very same haircut that looked very different two minutes ago. And so I put a little product in here. I scrunch it up. I start pushing it around and I kind of want to see what it's going to do naturally. I'm having him look around and I'm just kind of looking for shapes and a silhouette that, that look interesting here. Like to me, I was like, hey, that looks cool. I see a lot of barbers posting like a wing flipping out like that as like kind of an avant-garde thing. But I thought it was a little played out, so I didn't go with it. In fact, these shots are interesting because in the moment, I kept feeling like, well, I'm missing something. I'm not getting something that I want here. And even as I went to edit my shots, I, I breezed past these and I thought they were bad. But as I look at them right now, I'm like, I totally could have used that. I don't know what I was thinking. So I don't have a final image for these, but there is the process of a shot that I threw away for some reason. I will probably go back maybe in a few weeks when I feel like I need more content and re-edit some of those. Now I'm actually wetting his hair because I want to get rid of some of that smoothness that we blow dried in there. As soon as you get hair wet, it curls up again, it frizzes up again, it starts to look a little more natural. I had him shake it around, I got a few shots here, and I was happy enough with this one that I took it and edited it. So there you can see two very, very different looks out of the same haircut shot with an iPhone within seconds of each other. This is something that I, I really like about the longer styles that are popular these days is they are both neat hairstyles and messy hairstyles at the very same time, minutes apart. Thank you so much for watching. If you like this sort of content, please like and subscribe if you're into this sort of thing.